So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, and everyone else, if I could, there we go. Thank you, thank you. So, welcome everybody to the fifth international convention on the mathematics of neuroscience and AI. My name is Rory Battleday, and I'm here with conference co chairs Dan Nicolau and James Whittington. Um, and Giovanni Pezzulo is somewhere in the crowd, uh, our Italian co host.、Um, really, we've had Uh, an amazing range of people coming to this conference、um, today, and we're very happy to welcome you all. I usually like to just show a little bit about where people are coming from.、Um, and, you know, we've had predominantly people from the US, Europe, but some from all parts of the world. And if we zoom in on Europe, we see、uh, a definite concentration in the United Kingdom and also from Italy, from the local country. And this sort of fits our theme of being in the British Ambassador's residence,、um, but under the ancient aqueducts of Rome. And you know, hopefully, by coming here, we're able to foster collaboration between these two nations and also、um, bring a lot of the exciting AI research, neuroscience research, cognitive science, and biocomputation、um, to Italy,、uh, foster some collaborations there. So,、um, we've also got a fantastic range of speakers and spotlights.、Uh, For the next four days. So, these are some of the leading minds and researchers in the field doing incredible work, and we're extremely excited to hear from everybody.、Um, and I think, you know, a really good question to ask right at the start is okay, the venue is beautiful, the speakers are good,、uh, but why are we here? You know, what's the impetus? What's the reason for this conference? Why are we all together?、Uh, and, you know, I think this is an extremely exciting time. In the neural sciences, broadly construed, we have a proliferation of data from lots of different sources, a huge amount more than we've had before.、Um, it's a really fantastic time to be an experimentalist. We also are developing some quite interesting, consistent, and rich theory to go along with those experiments in various places. So, in the study of、um, You know, cognitive science, we've had the Bayesian paradigm. In、uh, AI, we've had deep learning, we have probabilistic programming. In the neurosciences, you know, a lot of very interesting model development, and all the way down to biophysics and imaging studies. So,、uh, so you know, on the, on the bottom left of the screen, there's a sort of recently discovered neuron、uh, from imaging a millimeter cubed of the human brain. Uh, that you know, has like, unknown, unknown properties, but potentially very exciting ones. So, rapidly growing amounts and sources of data, pieces of good theory, and sometimes、uh, you have the dream of,、uh, of real scientists, those two、uh, connect. But I would say, as a challenge, I don't think we have a unifying theoretical framework yet for the neural sciences.、Um, and you know, the, the analogy might be to something like 18th century chemistry. Where there was this proliferation of data, lots of new sources of acids, lots of new minerals, a huge amount of discovery, so much so that the previous system, theoretical systems, couldn't really cover it. But pieces of good theory, things like affinity tables, you know, the Aristotelian elements,、um, thinking about、uh, the interactions of different、um, gases and ideal gas laws. And so, of course, in the chemical revolution, Antoine Lavoisier ushered in this new theoretical era, after which it was kind of thought that chemistry was a more mature science, there was a unifying theory、um, that everyone, and a new language that everyone could speak together. You know, this kind of centered around radical theoretical frameworks, also new experimental breakthroughs, and tying the two together very strongly. You know, this, this emphasis at the time on experimental psychology,、uh, philosophy,、um, really meeting theories with data. So, what about the neuroscience revolution? In the, you know, I think it's a reasonable prediction to make that this could occur in the next decade with the number of brilliant minds working on it and the data and the theory that we have already. So, radical new unifying theoretical frameworks, new experimental breakthroughs、um, that respect data. That's why we're here. This is the Mathematics and Neuroscience Conference, and those are really the aims what we're, what we're hoping to foster here, cultivate, and bring about. Um, and so, you know, it's, it, it was in the history of science in the past, we would construe the chemical revolution as like the actions on, of Antoine Lavoisier. But now we have a richer understanding of the past. We kind of know that there were many figures and theories, including Madame Lavoisier, who's there in the central image with him, and the Academy of Sciences in France. 
And so that's what we've got today. We've got something like the academy in the beautiful settings of the villa. We have um, you know, a really rich range of people who have been innovating in theory and experiments. And we've got some of the world's great sponsors behind us. Our hypothesis is that you know, we, what we'd like to do is have these related groups of um, experimental and theory in biocomputation, neurosciences, cognitive sciences, and AI. Now, each of them you know, independently develops research, but each of these areas necessarily impose very strong constraints on the other ones. Any good theory has to fit all of them. And so what we're trying to do in this conference, um, which has been going on five years and we hope will continue to grow in size, is to bring these communities together periodically, such that they have some time to develop radical theory inside the community and then can share the theory and techniques to their neighboring, um, to their neighboring subfields. So that's what we're here over the next four days to achieve. Um, we, we don't know whether we'll achieve it, but we at least hope to begin ushering in something like this revolution in neuroscience. On day one, we'll focus on what's been a very um, a, a extremely popular area recently in machine learning and artificial intelligence. That's today. Um, Ilya and Ishita will be our chairs for today, and we have an exciting program of speakers and, and spotlights. At the end of the day, I'll chair a panel discussion. It should be really fun on um, you know, what people think of revolutionary directions in AI research. And then we'll finish with a reception here. We can spill out into the, into the gardens, um, relax, and start talking about the day's um, breakthroughs. Day two tomorrow, um, Dan and Yasmin are going to chair the biocomputation session, and after which we'll have the first poster session, followed by a virtual talk and poster session. And then uh, later at night, for those interested, we'll have an art salon. And so the salon will be in the Hotel San Giovanni kind of downstairs meeting room. Um, it's been organized by our wonderful chief creative officer, Taylor Beck. Um, and we hope anyone that's interested come along. There'll be some, um, some free alcohol and free non-alcoholic drinks. Day three, cognitive science, along with um, Antonella. I'm going to be chairing that session, where we're going to hear about some of the really exciting work that's been done in this in this interesting interdisciplinary field that sort of is adjacent to AI and neurosciences, uh, followed by the second poster session. And then later on that night, we're going to um, meet here in front of the villa and go to the conference dinner, which is in a very beautiful restaurant um, on the Appian Way where you can eat the food that ancient Romans ate. So I think it was one of my favorites, very particular experience. And we've been trying to organize a gluten-free vegan menu, which is apparently not what the um, ancient Romans ate. <laughs> um, and then day four, the final day, uh, um, neural theory. So co-hosted by James and Francesca. And with that, we'll finish again with a similar panel discussion, but this is this, on, this time on the, um, the future of computational neuroscience, something that the, the Gatsby Foundation were very um, interested in us including, and a final reception to finish up. So, we're talking radical, and so this, the day is very structured. We have um, very interesting talks from theory and world leaders, but another thing we try and do to foster at this conference is to have a very informal and hopefully inspiring atmosphere. So really, feel, please feel free to treat this venue as your own. Um, please feel free to talk to anyone, and please feel free to sort of revel in the, in the glorious sights of ancient Rome, and hopefully that can bring a little bit of inspiration. Um, Perché solo in Siemi possiamo uccidere al lupo dell'ignoranza e imparare la saggezza del canto delle serene senza smarrare la via. <laughs> Thank you, <laughs> thank you. Um, and now on to a few more mundane parochial matters. So for points of contact, any problems you're having, whether online or in person, um, just go to the entrance hall where you came through and there'll be a volunteer there that can connect you to the team. Any problems online, um, please email the volunteers mailing list so they'll get through to, to someone. The fire exits, so we have one fire exit immediately um, on this side of the building and the, the fire plan is to run onto the lawn. Uh, the, the other plan is that, that you know, <laughs> the, um, the other entrance, you can get the main entrance you came in on and then down either staircase and then assemble just outside there. So um, if any alarm goes off, any smoke is detected, anything like that, 
follow that protocol. We have, um, for emergencies, we have the front desk, but we also have the um, hospital of San Giovanni very nearby. It's like three minutes walk, or there's a taxi rank directly outside. Um, and then in terms of co-working spaces, which I know a lot of people requested, there's a really cool cafe like two blocks away that has co-working, dedicated co-working time. Uh, also, the, um, the Hotel San Giovanni has a meeting room downstairs where anyone can work. Um, and so the, <laughs> the lunch, you know, lunch is uh, a crucial thing here in Italy. And, you know, eat, pray, love, enjoy all the richness that Rome can show you. Uh, however, we have the security clearance and we have a talk at 2 p.m. every day. So if I could ask everyone to, to try to have paid by 1.30, that way, I think we can get everyone back into the villa at, at, you know, in time. It sometimes takes a little bit longer to pay in Italy than people are used to. And so, uh, especially now on the first day when we're getting used to the protocol, uh, you know, just try to be on time for the, the wonderful talks that we'll have recommencing at 2 p.m. Uh, thank you very much to the sponsors, Templeton, Gatsby, the Calvary, DeepMind, Harvard, Artificial Intelligence Journal, the ERC, and of course, the British Ambassador's Residence, UK and Italy. Um, and then I think I have one or two minutes left. So what, what I normally do, what you might remember, some of you might remember from last year is I sort of give away that you might be able to find a good restaurant to eat at. Of course, if you're Italian, you already know how to find a good restaurant, but given that we're here in a kind of a food capital, I thought, you know, I could do something. So last year we learned about how to identify good fish places from good meat places on the Greek islands. Um, this year, I want to kind of dwell on two ideas from statistics. One is the idea of a restriction class. And I think, you know, the search base of restaurants in Rome is vast. I wouldn't recommend trying to search at all for the optimal or even um, near optimal component. I think if you set inside yourself an intention of what you want, you can isolate these sort of five different restaurant classes. So the Restaurante, you know, it's a full service um, wine menu. There'll be a sommelier, there'll be a full, um, a full, like very thick uh, repertoire of dishes. It's going to be the most expensive. If you're looking for um, a sort of more rustic cooking, still very tasty, but not quite so posh, let's say, a trattoria. If you're looking maybe to have an elegant drink, osteria, with a few courses, well selected. You know, if you see any of those with pizzeria, it's probably not a good one to go to. Try and find something that's, you know, dedicated pizzeria with a um, pizzaiolo. And for those on a budget, I think these alimentaries, which are sort of, um, you know, they have like some pre-made sandwiches and food, always very good. Those can be a, a really good way to eat very well and save money. And then what, what you call a bar or a cafe here is often open from like 7.30 in the morning, even a bar, and they'll serve pastries, coffees, little foods. Okay, and then I, I think really the best strategy is a kind of hierarchical nearest neighbors approach, and that is just, just look at who's eating at the restaurant. You know, you, you really want to be eating somewhere where Italians are eating, and you really want to be eating what they're eating. And so I, I think I've been trying to learn for about 10 years how to pick a good restaurant in central Rome, and it's quite difficult. Uh, the Google Maps, the reviews it will not help you because they're usually left by English people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, without further ado, I'll thank you all for coming, and we'll thank you all for coming, and we'll start the day and hand over to Ilya and Ishta for AI and machine learning, and um, it's a pleasure to see you all. Thank you.